Oh. Awesome. For those of you watching on the live stream, they're all sitting at tables because we just ate. <laughs> now, we don't normally use tables when we do our, our service. All right. So this is the new moon of Elul. Okay, Rosh Kodesh means the head of the month or the new moon for the month of Elul. This is a very exciting time because it's the last month before we get into the fall holy days. Okay, so it's awesome. All right. So the way this is going to work is a, a visual slide-driven. I call it slide-driven because we're going to actually go read off of the slides that we're going to put on the screen, and you'll see them at home as well, and we're going to participate in this. It only runs about, I don't know, 20 minutes. It's not very long, and then I might have something to say. I don't know. And so it is late, so maybe not much. We'll see. Um, so if you'll all rise, we'll begin. And you don't have to stay uh, standing up the entire time, but if you can, it's, like I said, it's not very long. Okay, we'll read everything that's on the screen together except the one part where it says leader who announces the new moon for the month of Elul, okay? All right, we'll begin with the sounding of the silver trumpet. So we'll start with the slides. Together, Psalm 51, verse 15. Yahweh sefatai tiftach ufi yagid tehilatecha. Yahweh, open my lips that my mouth declare your praise. May the expressions of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. Also in the day of your gladness and in your appointed times and in the beginning of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Kedushat Levana, sanctification of the new moon. O oh, Yahweh, our Elohim and Elohim of our fathers, make this coming month one of good and blessing. Grant us long life, a life of peace, of good, of blessing, of sustenance, of vigor. A life marked by a reverence for you and a dread of sin. A life free from shame and reproach, a life of prosperity and honor. A life in which love of the living Torah and the fear of Elohim animates us. A life in which our heartfelt desires are fulfilled for good, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. Amen. He who performed miracles for our fathers and liberated them from slavery to freedom, may he quickly liberate us and gather our exiles from the four corners of the earth and let us say, Amen. The new moon of the month of Elul is today. May it prove to be good and fruitful for all 12 tribes of Israel. May the set-apart one, blessed be he, grant this Rosh Kodesh to us and to all his people for life and peace, for gladness and joy, for deliverance and consolation, and let us say, Amen. Blessed, praised, glorified, and honored, excuse me, honored and exalted be the name of the King of Kings, the set-apart one, blessed be he, who is the first and the last, and beside him there is no Elohim. Extol him in the heavens, Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before his face, his name is honored beyond all praise, excuse me, blessing and praise. I'm going to have to get some new glasses. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever. Let the name of Yahweh be blessed forever and ever. Amen. From Isaiah 66, 
verses 22 and 23. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make stand before me, declares Yahweh, so your seed and your name shall stand. And it shall be that from Rosh Kodesh to Rosh Kodesh, and from Shabbat to Shabbat, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares Yahweh. Amen. Rosh Kodesh Sameach. All right. Amen. You may be seated. Some of you who are new may be wondering, what's Sameach? Sameach is joyful. Okay. Simcha is joy. So Rosh Kodesh, joyful, new moon. Okay, rejoicing in the new moon. All right. So I wrote myself a little note here of something to talk about. What did I write? Because after all, I can't remember from like 10 minutes ago. Let's see. Ah. All right. So first of all, let me cover the usual information, which is we are marking time. And all opportunities of marking time are also opportunities to self-evaluate. Okay? In other words, how far have I come since the last time we marked time? We can look at it from the point of view of the last new moon. We can look at it from the point of view of the last week. We can even look at it over the last day, right? So here we're, we're marking time and we're comparing things in ourselves, not other people, comparing you to you a month ago. Okay, and so let's always look at it from that point of view and the looking back and then looking forward to like, okay, I got another new moon coming. This one is really important. This is Tishrei 1, which is also Rosh Hashanah. And so we're going to want to be setting sort of goals going forward. How much do you want to grow, change, develop between now and the next new moon? All right. And so I want to encourage all of you that we should be looking at it this way. Always looking back from the, what can I glean? Not so I can beat myself up in how bad I was, but, you know, what can I look at in my self-assessment? Maybe you took a good step forward. Maybe you took a little step backward. So it'll motivate you to take a bigger step forward, okay? And so we want to do that, but we also want to then, of course, look forward. And all of this with the understanding that, you are still here, which means you can still get to where you're trying to get to from here. All right, let's always remember that you can get there from right where you are right now. In the walk, in your life, in your health, in your age, in your whatever, okay? You can get there from here. That's not me making anything up. He would not call you to tease you. He called you because you can get there. And so let's be encouraged that that's, I know some of us are thinking, well, he's got a lot more confidence in this than I do. <laughs> okay, that may be true, but he's right and we're wrong. So if he thinks you can do it, you can. You just got to believe him and then do the doing. Just because he believes you can doesn't mean you will. It just means you can, all right? So the, the whether or not you will is in your hands. And that's what he's watching to see what you do with it, right? All right, so I was trying to think of real quickly, because I don't really plan a whole lot in advance for these things, because I want it to be sort of spontaneous. And I always like to give you something from a developmental point of view that could help you with this. And so I'm going to ask you to do something very hard to do. Okay? Well, physically it won't be hard to do. But it will maybe expose some things that you don't want to see. Which is, I'm, I'm going to ask you to take your clothes off and get in front of a mirror. No, I'm kidding. See? You guys are all wondering what I was going to say. You're all wondering what I was going to say. Actually, I am going to do that, but not the way, not like that. I'm going to ask you to completely expose yourself in how you are spending your time. Because if you were to assess your physical body, you would undress and get in front of a mirror. And then you would see all that you get to see, whether it needs to be worked on or not, and what, where the blemishes are, and where whatever is, right? You can't hide anything naked in front of a mirror. Well, if the light's off. Turn the lights on. Some of you are thinking, oh, I'll show him, I'll do it with the lights off. No, with the lights on. And I want you to do that with this inventory I want you to take, right? Because it's like taking an inventory of yourself when you look in the mirror and you want to see what's going on with your... It's like when you go to the doctor. What's the doctor doing? Testing you to see things like with your blood and with your hormones and with different things, right? They're testing to see what's going on and getting an inventory of your current state. Well, I want you to do a time inventory. And the way you're going to do this is, is very simple. That's why, as far as maybe not liking the results of it, 
is you're going to write down every minute of what you do. In other words, it doesn't have to be accurate to the second, but if you know that you slept for eight hours or six hours and write down and slept for six hours, then, then what, you know, how long does it take you and what time are you spending in prayer? What time are you spending in your job? What time are you spending eating even? What time are you spending playing games or goofing off or being with your family? Or Look, you may be surprised that you don't spend any time with your spouse or you don't spend any time with your kids or you're spending way too much time with somebody or something. But you can't know and fix if you don't have the inventory, okay? It's like I used to do this as a personal trainer with food. I used to have the people that I was training write down every single thing they ate or drank. And I had them do it for two weeks. And I told them, don't change what you're doing just because you know I'm going to look at it. Because I want to know, and you need to know, what your normal habit is. So I would say that for this month coming up, don't change anything. Just do what you normally do. Just keep track of it at least for the first two weeks. If you want to, after two weeks, you can start making adjustments. But I think it'd be good, maybe a harsh reality, but a good kind of cold water in the face to realize how much time you spend. You may be encouraged and realize you spend a good amount of time doing some things you didn't even realize that were good that you were spending time doing. Maybe you haven't given yourself credit for that. And so what I would have people do is, before they made any edits, they would write down what they ate and what they drank, then I said, look, now let's look at what you wrote. I'm going to be really ridiculous, okay? Let's say the person was eating five donuts a day. I don't know anybody that does that, okay? And then I'd say, well, look, I don't want you to go from five donuts a day to zero donuts a day. That's a big leap. So why don't we plan to cut it down to three, and then we'll cut it down to one. And you understand know what I'm saying is? So you, I don't want you, when you look at your inventory, to do something that will not work and not last, which is radically change it, from what is your normal routine into something that's not normal for you, and then you'll struggle with it. But you could say, you know what? I need to spend a little bit more time doing this and a little bit less time doing that with the goal of doing a lot less of that and a lot more of this or whatever it is, but start to have a strategy to ease into or work your way into the new change. I don't want you just to make the radical change. Some of you are not going to listen and try it, and I'm telling you, it probably won't work long term. Okay? So if you realize you're not doing enough of something, then look at how much you're doing and increase it by a, 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 good, little, a good little small amount, like 10% or whatever. Just do a little more of it. And you do that for a week, then maybe you add it up, bump it up a little more than that. Okay? It'd be like the person that's trying to learn how to run a marathon, 26 miles. All right, let's say right now you can barely run a mile. Okay, so you run a mile, you run a mile. Guess what? After a while, then you stretch it out to a mile and a half. Then you feel pretty good about that. You stretch it out to two miles. You see what I'm saying? You don't just go from a mile to 26 miles. Okay? Your body won't handle it right. But by the time you work your way up to it, you'll be able to do it. I used to do this with the people I was training who's, who I tell them, look, I want you to get on a bike and I want you to ride it for half an hour. Not for weight loss, just to get the cardio system going. And they'd be like, I can't ride it for five minutes. I said, well, then ride it for as many minutes as you can. Keep track of it. And then after a couple of days at that number, stretch it another minute or two. Just keep making it longer. You're not going to go from five minutes as the most you do to a half an hour. Not in one leap. Or if you do, you'll be sore the next day and then be discouraged and you're not going to want to do it. And so I want you to do a time inventory. How are you spending your time? And if you can, be brutally disciplined in not changing anything for the first two weeks. All right? Because you don't have a real clear sense of what you normally do. Because you may be marking some things down that maybe it's that day you did a lot more of something but you normally don't. I want you to look for the patterns over time of what your normal behavior is like in terms of how you spend your time. So just try to keep track of it. Have a little thing on your phone or a little piece of paper or something that every time you go to do something, that activity, just kind of mark down what, you know, how long it was or when you started, when you finished, just so you can get a sense, give or take how, a few minutes or whatever, of like how long. If you turn on the TV to watch the news, how, do you have any idea how much news you watch? Some of you, none. Some of you, 25 hours a week or whatever it is but you don't know. You don't know. I'm sure that if I asked any of you, you have no idea how much time you spend with your wife or your kids or your husband or your kids. 
either way, right? You don't know. Oh, I spend lots of time. What does that mean? I, I don't know. <laughs> so why don't you keep track of it? And be honest with yourself. Am I, am I counting something as spending time when it's really not? I'm just trying to give myself extra credit. Be conservative on how you credit things, okay? Because you want an honest picture of what you have already been doing. Look, we're not going to get anywhere, especially in ourselves, if we're not going to be filled with integrity and honest. Is that fair? So when I want you to do this, I want you to do this as honestly as you can. Change nothing just so you get a sense of what your real behavior is like. Do that for two weeks. Now, you may notice something in the first couple of days that you don't like. Good. Write that down as something you want to change. Don't change it just at that moment. Give yourself the full, this is the discipline that you need. Give yourself two weeks of really evaluating the pattern of behavior. Because it may not be every day is the same thing, but you'll see over two weeks a pattern of behavior. Because maybe you caught in the first couple of days, for whatever reason, something happened, you, you did more of something than you normally don't do. But over two weeks, you'll see it balance out a little bit more. So I'm thinking, I really would like to do it for a month, but I think that most of us are not patient enough for that. So two weeks. I'm going to ask you for two weeks, the first two weeks of Elul, to do an inventory of your time expenditure, how you spend your time. Who's in for that? You in for that? All right? All right. Now, if you're married, you do not have my permission to ask your spouse to show you their sheet. This is an individual thing. Now, you can share it with each other if you want. I'm just saying that I don't give you permission to want to see the other one's sheet. Because then you would be tempted to tell the other one what to do to adjust what's on their, their inventory. Now, I think it'd be good at some point if you wanted to get their opinion, but their opinion should be on things like, do you think I'm spending enough time with you? Do you think I'm spending enough time with this? Those kind of specific questions, not just listening to them tell you whatever your hobby is or whatever your goof-off thing is telling you, well, I told you you need to be doing too much of that. <laughs> Well, telling them has not worked. They need to figure it out for themselves. Okay? And it's their choice and their thing. And so I want you to really take this seriously. I think this could be a, an amazing potential breakthrough for you. Okay? To think about how you're spending your time. By the way, I gave you a little task today during the sermon message about planning your day the night before and then looking at it again first thing in the morning. You know what? That's something that could be on your sheet. Or real, maybe it's not now, but after I told you today, you could always start that, to, you know, starting that tonight for tomorrow. We'll see if that's on there. See if you could put that on there, doing the prep the night before and the, you know, sort of the launch in the morning, just making sure that you got that little morning routine going. Okay? And so does anybody have any questions about that? All right. So I think it's simple enough. It's clear enough. Wait, Tamara. Wait, hand her the mic since you happen to have it right there. It just worked out that Ben had the mic in front of you. Okay, I just want to clarify one thing. If I say that I'm spending time with Tiffany, but I'm sitting here texting Ben, I mean, does, who, who am I saying that I'm spending time with? Okay. Just checking. No, no, that's a, that's a really, actually, a really good question. And it fits into what I was trying to kind of get to with this idea of being conservative about the way you count your time, okay? If you happen to be in the same building with each other, that doesn't mean you're spending time with each other necessarily. The other person has to also believe you're spending time with them. All right? Now, wait, but Tamara, hold on. It can go that way, though. I had... My daughter come to me a couple of nights ago. I was watching something on the TV. It was later, so I actually have a headset that I could put on that's Bluetooth to the TV, so there's no sound. And she said she wanted to hang out with me. And I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll turn off my headset. She goes, no, I'm going to be sitting here on the couch in my headset. I just want to be in the room with you. So that counted because we both felt like we were spending time together. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to convince myself of something that's not there. If you are spending time with somebody and they believe you're also spending time with them, 
then it's spending time with them. Okay? There's a lot of times that Rebbitz and I will sit together in the living room. She's watching something, and I'm doing something, and she's happy that I'm with her, and I'm happy that I'm with her, and she's happy, you know, etc. And we're not doing anything with each other necessarily. Okay? So that would count. And so it's a matter of as long as you both feel like time is being spent together, then it counts. All right? So if you're with somebody and your attention is completely not on them and they're not okay with that, then that doesn't count. Okay? Sarah Beth, Ben, you want to bring her the mic? On this side of the room, over here. We could make people start walking over to here, maybe easier. But go ahead. So, questions. I've heard this kind of exercise before, and it sounds like a really good idea. Um, but when I go to execute it, it's so painful to stop what I'm doing and mark down that I'm changing it. How do I get around that? Okay, it's a habit to, to develop. And look, it's, again, it's not about exact minute-by-minute minute accuracy. At some point, you'll realize you forgot to write it down, and you just go back in your mind going, well, I spent about 30 minutes, or I spent about an hour, and just write down what your guess is, okay? It's, yeah, she, said, <laughs> she said she's blue, it has to be accurate. Then what you do is you take your little piece of paper and your pen as you start an activity, you put it in front of you and you bring that with you and as you go to start the next activity, you still have it and you know that it's there. I don't know, okay? It, you're gonna have to get over that blue stuff anyway. Because you wanna be accurate to the instructions. The instructions were that you don't have to be accurate, okay? Now she's tortured. Because as a blue, she's a pleaser too. And then she's like, how do I please him and please me? And I got to be accurate. But he said I don't have to be accurate. Ah! All right. Your, your, your point is well made, though, because it's not going to be something that you, you've ever done before. So how are you going to think, you know? It's kind of like I remember when I started in sales, they told me to mark down the mileage which meant that every time I got in the car, I had to remember to mark down the mileage, and then when I got someplace, I had to mark down the mileage, and, where I was. and it was a hard habit to develop to have to write that all down, and remember, and then if I went to two spots and forgot, now I have to go back and think, okay, I went here and went here, I'm supposed to write that down, and how far was that, and you know, it's, it's hard to do, okay? Now, for that, being accurate was more important because it was part of how I got paid and, and compensated for the miles, but for this, it's about painting a picture. And if you're off by, if you did something for two hours and really you only did it for an hour and 53 minutes, it's still two hours is good enough, okay? All right? It's, it's making the point. It's not so much about did we get it down to the second. All right? As a matter of fact, I'll make it easier for you. Okay? For the sake of keeping track, I want you, this will make it much easier for you, all time gets rounded to the nearest half hour or hour. Okay? That'll make it simple. Then you don't have to be more accurate because you just want to know, did I spend, if I spend 47 minutes, okay, so I gave it an hour. I spent an hour and 10 minutes, so I gave it an hour. It's, I just need you to get an idea. Okay? So it's not about, you know, if you need to be a little more accurate, get it down to 15 minutes. I don't care. Okay? But it's not about the seconds of it because you want to be able to add it up and get a sense. Wow, when I look at how much time I spent doing whatever, you can say, over two weeks, that was four hours, and that's not enough. Or that was 30 hours, that's way too much, okay? And it's that picture that I'm trying to get you to see, and getting it down to the minute is not gonna help that any, okay? So let's just round things to the nearest 15 minutes or whatever it's gonna be, just, just to give you a sense, okay? So you did only 47 minutes, all right, so maybe that's 45 minutes for you. Or maybe it's an hour for you. It doesn't matter, it's still painting the picture. All right? Okay. Okay, on this side? Okay. Hi, Rabbi. So, uh, in the example where you have, uh, say, you spend one hour watching TV, on one hour, spend the same hour, you spend quality time with your daughter or, or with your wife, do you count one hour quality time or one hour TV or both? How do you, how do you count um, both of them? Okay. That's, that's an easy question, but it's a, it's a good question. 
Okay, follow this now. I'll use my wife and I for the example because I talked about that already. My wife is going to write down that she was watching TV because that was, it was her choice, her show, she's watching TV. I chose then to be with her doing what she was doing. So the one who's choosing to do what the other person is doing is doing it for that reason. The other person is doing it because they're doing it. In other words, if I was watching something and she came in to watch with me or just to be with me, but she really didn't want to watch what we're watching, then she's coming just to be with me. Now, if we're both choosing to watch something together, we're both writing it down as watching something. Okay, that's time. But it's also something we chose to do together. So you're going to have to find a way to put part of your spousal time as spousal time doing entertainment together. Okay? You're going to go watch a movie. You're going to go for a walk. I mean, do I count going for a walk as exercise? Do I count for a walk as social if I go with my wife? So you can count things for more than one thing. Okay? But when I'm going to be sitting with her and I'm doing something on my, on my laptop while she's watching a show, I'm going to count that as quality time with her and whatever it is I'm doing on my laptop. She's counting it as quality time with me and watching TV. Does that make sense? Okay, so you can get credit in two columns, so to speak. But then what you may notice is, is all of your quality time with somebody doing something like that or do you actually spend any time just with them and focused on them? Because clearly, when we're doing we're doing the way I just described it, in those moments, we're not talking to each other, we're not interacting with each other, we're just in the same room with each other, which we both like, because it makes us feel like that's a quality time, but it's not the same as face-to-face. And we're, we're spending time. Like, so if we sat down and had a cup of coffee and a little snack or something, that would be different than sitting together watching a show. And so you start writing these things down, and maybe you eventually you categorize them, and all you blues can make categories and labels and bookmarks and whatever you want to do, okay? You can color code them and, you know, get different highlighters. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. All right? Okay? Yeah. Okay, so, but eventually what you'll do, though, is you'll start to, listen, I want you to feel free to create your own categories, and recognize that some of the things you're doing fit into more than one, okay? They fit into more than one. And so I'll give you an example like that might happen tonight, which is normally what happens on Saturdays. A lot of you like to go out and eat, okay? And when I go to go out and eat with you, that's for her, not for you. Otherwise, I don't normally go. Now, here's the interesting thing. All of you know that when we go, I don't even sit at the same table with her. Because she usually sits with the ladies, I sit with the guys. But I'm only there because my being there makes a difference to her. So I have to mark that off as something. Okay? So this, and that's why a lot of you ask her first to make sure if she's going, because then they'll figure that'll get me to go. Because if she goes, I, if, it, if she doesn't go, I don't go. Because <laughs> when she was out of town, people were like, Rabbi, I didn't come to anything. You know? But interestingly enough, for you guys who don't know how to make these decisions, I made a choice, and it doesn't make sense, but I make a choice to do that knowing that for whatever reason, even if I don't understand it, it makes a difference to her, even if we interact zero. But I'm there. Okay? And it's just one of those things. I learned this from, I used to go on these shofar runs where I drive 12 hours to Pennsylvania to pick up a bunch of shofars from this one warehouse. And I bring Stephen with me. Stephen would sit next to me in the car all the way for 12 hours on his laptop playing video games, not interacting with me really at all, and then turn around, do the same thing on the way back within a 24-hour shift. We get there, go to sleep, wake up, blow the horns, pick the ones I want and drive back. So it took basically a day and a half. And then he'd look at me and say, that was great, let's do it again. He thought it was quality time. That's how I learned that that could be the case. We didn't hardly interact at all. He was with me, though. And he thought this was great daddy time. We was, and that's why I understood what my daughter wanted the other night. She just wanted to be in the room. She's doing her thing. I'm doing my thing. But we're in the room together. And so I might not have understood that with her had I not already experienced that with him. But I get that. Okay? So, do the inventory. Don't feel restricted. I mean, you can be as broad in how you want to categorize things and how you want to look at things, but just see what it tells you, okay? See what it tells you, and then you can learn enough about your behavior patterns to make some adjustments. 
Especially you want to look for your vertical time, okay? By vertical time, I don't mean with the leadership here. I mean your vertical time with him. You want to look at your family time, spouses, then children, okay? And see how that all fits into the deal. Because some of you get lost in things. Some of you may be workaholics and get lost in your work, and then you don't spend any spousal time or any family time. Yeah, somebody's pointing a finger at herself. <laughs> somebody's like, me, right? So there has to be, and what we're looking for in the inventory, we're looking for the out-of-balance areas so that we can bring them into balance. Out-of-balance areas. This is everything in your life is about bringing things that are out-of-balance into balance. Your health, socially, spiritually, you know, family, relationally, all kinds of things, entertainment, and all things have to be in balance. But how do you know if they are if you don't actually do an inventory? You got to do an assessment. That's the only way you can know. And so do these things and then figure out if anything's out of balance. Because some of you are convinced, well, you know, this area could be out of balance because I'm killing it over here. Well, no. It's good that you're killing it over here, but if you're neglecting this over here, something will go sideways. There's not much in your life that you can neglect. By the way, including entertainment. If you don't ever enjoy yourself, you will be in trouble. Okay? You have to have downtime. You have to enjoy yourself. You even have to go occasionally on a vacation. Which I'm excited that we're going to do. Now, of course, it's not like you would go on a vacation since I'm going to bring work and books and things and work. And I'm going to spend a lot of time with my wife. Don't get me wrong. But she also likes to just spend time quietly reading a book in the sun. And I, I don't need to sit there in the sun with her because I just need to walk on the boat and I'll get a tan. So it's just one of those. So I'll just do that, walk to the buffet, sit down and do my work. And I'll have already gotten enough tan for the day. So, but that's going to be my vacation time because nobody's going to be calling me, needing me, or having appointments or anything else. Okay? And so, and yeah, you can clap for that. But I will go to the shows and I will go and do the different things. And those of you that have seen me at weddings, I do line dances and all that kind of stuff. So you're both saying, like, what? I can do all that stuff. When they do that on the boat, I'm right out there. Okay? My daughter's smiling and laughing. It used to be that she wanted to do all that stuff when she was little. We first went on the boats, and then I went and did them with her. And so I remember we took some staff many years ago on a boat, and they looked and saw me out there like, what? Is that rabbi out there? <laughs> I like line dances. What can I tell you? Okay. Janet's got a question. Bring the mic over to her. Yes, thank you, Rabbi. Question is, um, so once we have the da data, um, is there any, I don't know, is it parameter or like um, a way, a good way to spend time in each category? You know, like what will be a good balance? Is it up to us? Is it it's it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be subjective. Okay, so what you want to do, I guess I wasn't, I don't say I wasn't clear. I didn't mention it. So you're going to do at the end of your two weeks, I want you to sort things out, categorize them, and then add them up. Okay? And do it on a weekly thing. So you have your categories of all these different things you did, and some of them are different activities, but they're really in the same category. Like maybe there was two or three different things that were entertainment or two different types of things that were social. Two, whatever it is, categorize them, and then fi figure out how many hours a week Especially look at the two weeks and see how each week looked and then kind of take the average between them to get a sort of a sense. Because maybe one week you did a little more, one week you did a little less of those things. And just get a sense of how much time you're spending in these categories, these areas. And it's for you to decide where the balance is. There is no like setting where you shouldn't watch more than this or do more than that. or so You need to spend at least a minimum of this with so and so, whatever. What works for you is what works for you. Okay? You may be married to somebody that is much more needy. You may be married to somebody who's much less needy. Okay? You may, you know, I don't know, whatever the categories are. Just figure them out. I mean, I've got children that need my time. And you know what? They don't need the same amount. I've got two different children. They're very different in personality. And 
they each need my time, but not the same amount. So I know what he needs, and I know what she needs, and it's not the same. Okay? And so I have to make sure that I'm doing what they need and giving them what they need. And so I got to make sure that that's in my schedule enough for them. And I know what my wife needs. Now, by the way, if you don't know what anybody needs, ask them. But you don't ask them, how much time do you need? Ask them, am I giving you enough time? And if the answer is yes, good. If the answer is no, then ask, what can I do? How much more time do you need? How can I fix that? You know? And then also find out from them what sort of time they want. Don't just take the yes and then you try to give them time that's not the way they want it. How many of you remember when we did the five love languages? Okay? Not everybody. Well, a good number of hands went up. So in the five love languages, when we, when we had you guys go through that process, one of the things I told you was that you needed to explain to the other person that you're interacting with, your spouse, right? We did this as husbands and wives that you had to be able to explain to your husband or wife what your love language looked like in action. In other words, if your love language was quality time, let's say I know my wife's love language is quality time. If I know that, I need to find out what she thinks quality time is, not what I think it is. So just knowing that our love language, because I might think I'm speaking it all the time, and she's like, you don't speak it at all. I'm thinking, but I give you all this quality time. She goes, that's not quality time. Because we both have quality time somewhere in our top three, and yet her idea of quality time and mine are completely different. It doesn't make either one right or wrong, it's just they're different. So they don't naturally match, which means I have to know if I want to give her quality time, what that looks like to her. That's why I asked my daughter when she came in the room, I thought maybe she wanted some quality time with me, and she said she was totally happy to lay on the couch next to me sitting in my chair, and she would do her thing and I would do my thing. That's fine. She told me that was what she was wanting. Had she wanted more attention, I was ready to turn off the TV and give her attention. But I was looking to her to tell me what she needed. Okay? By the way, if it's the other way around, you're the one doing the needing, you should be able to go up to someone and explain to them, I need you one-on-one, -on -one, or I need to just hang out with you if that's okay. Just communicate. A big problem in, in family relationships or any relationship is a lack of communication. We've got to just communicate, all right? So when you're doing your time inventory, yes, you may realize that you're probably not spending enough time doing something. If it's interacting with another person, then you may want to ask them if they're getting enough time. And if no, ask them what you could do to fix that. What would be more the type of time you'd want to spend, all right? Because you may not have guessed in your own head what that should look like. So never presume that. All right, Chris. Did the mic die or? No. There it goes. Okay. Um, so when you're talking about asking, not only asking a person how much hours, but getting to know that uh, through like interacting. Um, with Yahweh, um, I mostly just am not sure. So I, what I usually do, like last night I spent a lot of time in prayer on Shabbat, but then during the week, it's mostly kind of a praying at all times thing where I'm more like just vertically aware and I don't really talk um, as far as like praying or if I do, it will be like praise Yahweh like for one or two minute, not even two minute, like just a very, so usually during the week, I don't feel like I need that until the Shabbat and then Shabbat I'll like reflect on the week and have a lot more to talk about because on an individual day, I don't always have a lot to talk about. So, All right. but I can't ask Yahweh how much time or how much, you know, uh, he needs from me every week besides just keeping Torah. All right, Torah. so you're, first of all, your, your approach is backwards. Not backwards, it's, it's just wrong. He doesn't need anything from you, okay? Yahweh doesn't need anything from you in terms of like attention that way. He wants you to put him first. He wants you to be aware of him. He doesn't need a specific amount of time he wants you to protect the time that he's giving you to be with him, like Shabbat and the holy days. And he wants you to always be thinking of him and putting him in a priority as first. But it's not about, like, how many minutes. It's about you needing to spend time with him. He, want, he, he, he has this whole thing in his relationship with knowing that you need to spend time with him. And when you don't spend time with him, it's going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt him. Okay? So his, in, his, his instructions all throughout Scripture about spending time with him is really for you. 
He doesn't need any of that. He knows you need it, though. So he gives you that guy. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay? You need that time. But now when it comes to people, though, you're not looking for them to tell you, well, I need like three hours a week from you. No, just look, am I spending enough time with you? That doesn't have any number on it. Just am I spending enough time? No. How much more would you like? What, what, what can I do to fix that? Don't, I'm not asking for minutes. Well, I'd like it if, you know, once a week we did this or every day you could just spend a few minutes doing this or whatever. Let them give you a sense of what it is that they need or want that you're not doing. Ask them. I know I haven't had that conversation. It's a conversation that would be good to have. Hey, you know, do you want any more time for me than I'm giving you? Or maybe different type of time. Maybe I'm not giving you the type of time that you need. I'm spending time with you, but it's the wrong type of time. So how do we figure this out? By communicating, by talking to each other. Okay? So once you get your inventory, you do want to interact with the people that are involved in the inventory about the time you're spending with them. You may also be telling some people who are not married to you or your children that you might need to spend a little less time with them because they're taking up too much of your time. Now, those of you that get those kind of conversations, don't get offended. They're trying to get their inventory in balance. So make sure you say it in a, in a way that's packaged as nicely as you can, saying, look, I love you, you're my friend, I appreciate you, but my inventory's out of balance and I'm trying to fix that, so I'm gonna be cutting this back just a little bit. Because some of you have people in your lives that are just taking up way too big a chunk of time. That don't, I'm not telling you cut them out of your life, but bring it back into balance. If you're married, it's easy. Say, look, I'm not spending enough time focused on my spouse or my kids, but I'm spending all this. I spend more time with you than my spouse. That's not probably, probably good, okay? So then we can get those conversations going because this is one of those good inventory things, all right? You think this is good, wait till we do the next inventory, the emotional inventory. So I'm giving you the easy one first. And some of you already think this is a hard one. Because we'll do, maybe we'll do that the next Rose Coders that we do. Not for trumpets, but after that, we'll do the emotional inventory. Oh, this could just be a whole can of worms, can't it? <laughs> All right, anybody else? All right. Well, it's after nine here, so we'll go ahead and end things here. Hope that was a blessing. Hope that you find this a useful exercise to go through. Okay. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King. Father, we come to you here at the beginning of Elul, an exciting time that leads into the fall feasts. And so, Father, we want to thank you and praise you. We want to give you glory and honor. We want to ask you to give us strength as we go through these inventories to help us to truly see how we're spending our time. Help us to truly embrace the turning of the clock so we can always look at this as a new, clean page to write on. While we have learned, hopefully, from our past, the future is still unwritten and we can do whatever we need to do going forward and help us to truly embrace that you have called us because we can from where we are get to where you want us to be. So, Father, we want to thank you. I want to praise you. I want to give you again all glory and honor. In the name of all names, Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. 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 All right, let's see. We've got to do a little Rosh Chodesh Sameach out here. All right, let me come out by my wife. We'll do it from over here. Let's see if we get the camera on this side. Where's Rick's trying to get us from that side. He's got us from over here. There we go. All right, we don't have that many people on the camera. That's okay, but we're all going to kind of shout out and wish everybody out there a Rosh Kodesh Sameach, okay? Here we go. On three. One, two, three.